Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my Florida drive-by. I'm actually just uh, leaving a VA hospital. I'm up in Cape Coral, Florida, and um, uh, hope everybody's healthy, wealthy, and wise, and doing great. It's about 84 degrees out today. It really is a beautiful day. Today's the 14th of uh, September, 2015. Really nice now. As usual, it's beautiful in Florida, normally. <laughs> Gotta turn on this road. But I uh, hope everybody's healthy, wealthy, and wise and doing good. Um, today's video drive-by, I guess I wanted to discuss about the uh, 380 ACP LK bullet. Now, there's people out there you know, that are taking some contests with me about the 380. Okay. Let's just get the book straight. The history book straight, okay? Originally, uh, the U.S. used to use 38s. Right? They found it. They were a very poor penetrating bullet. They, uh, um, the military uh, had a bullet designed for them. The 230 grain ball ammo. Okay, that was designed for them. And then they used the 1911 Colts, right? And that's what they had for the longest time. And the only reason they changed over to 9mm was because of Geneva Convention. They thought that using 45 ACP was cruel and uh, overkill. And also, a lot of the new recruits had problems handling the, uh, the 45 ACP. Uh, they functioned a little bit better with the uh, the 9 millimeter. Especially a lot of women coming into the armed services, uh, you know, that had a lot to do with it too. So basically, that is the reason there. Now, uh, brings us to defense. Defense ammunition, okay, comes in all different types. They have. 22, 38, 380, 9mm, 40, 45, 50. You know, there's just so many, 357, there's so many ammunition variants. Um, there's 41 Magnum, too. Uh, you know, that's another one, too. There's 41 Magnum. So there's a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, type of calibers that um, you can buy. Now, does it make them all good? No. It's just that there's so many calipers made because the, the manufacturers want to sell guns and they want to sell ammunition. And, uh, you know, figure every single one of those uh, ammunitions have to have a gun to fire in. So there's, you know, some manufacturers, there's, you know, 32s even. Uh, some manufacturers can go ahead and, uh, you know, make a, a gun in every caliber. So they can make a 22, they can make a uh, you know, uh, a 9 millimeter, a 38, a 380, a 40, 41, 44, 50. You know, they can make a lot of different calibers uh, and sell a lot of different guns. Uh, and I really believe that that is what it's all about. Now, and by the way, we're on US 41 right now, heading uh, northbound. I don't have to go to the bank and get some papers notarized. But anyway, uh, so that's really the gist of it. So it brings us to defensive rounds. What, you know, as far as 380 ACP for defensive round? Well, number one, look at the bullet. The bullet is small. The bullet, you know, does not have a lot of uh, kinetic or potential energy. Uh, it doesn't have a high velocity and not a lot of foot pounds. So you're taking a bullet and you're uh, putting that in an automatic factor, 380 ACP, right? Uh, and the bullet, okay, operates in an automatic, the gun, right? It's not like a revolver where you just pull the trigger. And most of the spent gas is spent on, you know, uh, used in pushing the bullet out. No, because in an automatic, um, the gases are going to recoil your slide, okay, um, and, you know, ensure that the slide goes off the back. So a lot of the gases then are escaped out of the ejection ports, um, 
then it, by inertia, the slide comes back and loads the next round. And you do it again. So uh, you're losing a large percentage of your uh, gases that propel the bullet. So uh, already you're at a disadvantage with the automatic gun. And if you're using a lower or weaker bullet, an even more disadvantage. 380 guns, normally they're small. They're normally compact guns. They usually have sometimes a half inch barrel on them. You know, inch barrel, uh, they're small. Uh, they're not very heavy. Uh, and accuracy, I mean, how accurate do you think you can be with a 380 with a like maybe a one inch barrel. How much could you hit, you know, at 21 feet? You're not going to be very accurate. You're not going to be very good. The sights are usually substandard. So, you know, a 380 is a backup gun. A lot of people will tell you uh, it's, it's really a joke. I, I, there's a, people, a few people, I made some comments on 380 videos, and they would say, oh, the three, you know, if I shot you in the head, well, yeah. If you shot anybody in the head, probably, you know. Uh, but the problem is, nobody normally is a good enough shot to get a person, you know, a, a threat directly in the head or between the eyes, so to say, or directly in the heart, you know. And when you get with a 380, uh, don't forget, most people wear clothes. Uh, if it's colder climate, you know, they're going to be wearing a jacket. If it's a warmer client, they may have a few layers of, you know, shirts or something. Like that. But either way, that is a barrier to that bullet because it's so weak. And a lot of people say, well, I'll use a 380 hollow point plus P or something, you know, or some kind of like defensive round. Yeah, but you're actually making the gun even less efficient because hollow points are meant to expand, not to penetrate. So you have a hollow point that has a hole in it. You shoot something, cloth is going to get caught up in it still. It's going to expand before it probably maybe penetrate a muscle, a, 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 you know, artery or a, a bone or something like that, and you know, cause enough damage to stop the threat. So 380s really, um, you know, they're nice guns to do reviews on uh, YouTube about and look at them and say, oh, yeah, this is cool, this is nice, and all that. that that's beautiful, you know. Uh, Go and show your collection of 380s you have. They're red, blue, green, purple, stainless. But for somebody serious, uh, you know, that wants a defensive gun, um, no. Uh, and you can also see in Florida in front of us, uh, you can ride motorcycles without helmets or glasses or any kind of anything. Um, yeah, so <laughs> that's interesting, huh? But anyway, uh, so, 380, really, in my opinion, is a useless gun. I mean, I would never recommend it to a wife, to a friend, or anybody that I thought they should have a defensive gun. The only time it's a useful gun is a backup gun. You know, maybe you have your main carry gun, and then in your glove compartment you have a backup gun or your back pocket. It's a good backup gun, and when you get into 380s, probably the best, the the better, I would say probably have one of the best ones are like the Berettas. Berettas really make a nice uh, little double action. Bursa and Bursa, they make some good double actions. I would stick with a double action uh, 380, something that has a safety on it, uh, like Pacmire rubber grips so it's good gripping for your hands. And try to get a little bit longer barrel. Uh, but you know, you can use defensive hollow points, uh, but you know, that's not a requirement. Uh, regular, 380 ACP full metal jacket would be fine. The biggest one you can find. Uh, you know, always when it comes to guns, the edge is in the bigger caliber. And a lot of people will say, oh, you know, if you can't shoot something, it, well, you know, with the 380, smaller gun, smaller barrel, weaker bullet, uh, chances of you hitting. I mean, if, what I would do is if you have a 380 that you really are seriously considering for defensive, Take it out, see what you could do at 21 feet. Can you keep all the bullets within a six inch group at 21 feet? Can you do that? And then try, you know, uh, 50 feet. 
see how accurate with that 380. If at 21 feet, and let's say you have a 10 round magazine, you can't keep every one of those bullets within a six inch pie, pit, uh, pie plate or circle. That's You're not accurate enough to carry that gun. Don't bother. Get another gun, carry another gun. Because that's like the minimum to be accurate. And you should be getting bullseyes. I know with my 45, my compensated 45, my Nighthawk, I, you know, out of seven rounds, I put them all in six inches. At least three of them I get bullseyes. And the rest of them are even closer in like two inches. So uh, that's accurate. If I shoot that, shoot that gun, I know I'm going to hit what I'm shooting at. And I know I'll stop a threat at least 21 feet. And that's where you want to be. You want to be at least at 21 feet to stop any kind of threat that you're going to be shooting at. Because uh, um, if you're not accurate out to 21 feet, chances are you're not going to hit what you're shooting at. But uh, 380, myself, it's a good backup gun, but other than that, it's useless. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend anybody carry that gun. I mean, only if they, like, have to. Like, if they couldn't shoot any other gun, it's better than a BB gun, I'll put it that way. Uh, uh, actually, a revolver probably would be more powerful. A, a, three, a 38, a snub nose, Smith, would probably be more powerful than the 380. Because more of the spent gases, the burnt gases, you're using to propel the bullet. And with the, uh, with the um, 380, more of the, you know, you, you, more of the gases are used to operate the gun, put the slide back, and you know, for loading and things like that. But I wanted to bring that up, uh, you know, 380, useless gun, useless bullet, uh, only really one purpose, a backup gun, or if somebody had nothing. It's like, you know, any gun is better than nothing, a BB gun is better than nothing, a pellet gun is better than nothing, a 380 is better than nothing. Uh, usually when I hear a 38s and 380s, I kind of group them together as being uh, backup guns. Uh, I mean, really, if you wanted something that would be nice, equal in between, a 40 Smith & Wesson is nice. It's, you know, 0.40 inches. Uh, it's just under the 45. Uh, they handle great. You know, uh, you know it, it's the same diameter as a 10 millimeter or a 9 millimeter. I would probably opt more with the Smith & Wesson 40. I think that's like an ideal round for most people. Uh, not a lot of recoil, not a lot of uh, kick. Uh, and uh, you're still getting almost, you know, a half inch of lead out of that gun. But uh, nine millimeters, okay. I would say a nine millimeter probably would be the minimum gun that I would uh, have concealed carry. With, uh, if you wanted really a 380 as a back gun. But why would you need two guns? You're better off just having one good, reliable gun. But uh, there's a wide assortment of them. Uh, bottom line, uh, I would do is, you know, go out to a range. If you could fire the 380, the 38, the 9mm, the 40, you know, and a 45 or 44 Magnum or 350. If you could fire them all at 21 inch target, I mean a 21 foot target with a 6 inch uh, pipe, plate, uh, pipe plate on it or markings for 6 inch, and see how accurate you are with every gun. And then you can decide, you know, which one you want to carry because you want to be very accurate with it. You want to hit your target. 380 is tough to hit, and, you know, with that short of a barrel at that distance, it's, you know, it's just, you know, uh, some people might be able to do it, but reliably, I do not think you could get critical shots with 380 to stop somebody at 21 feet. And maybe at five feet, Right. But, you know, most of your encounters are going to be probably out to 21 feet or less. So that's why we always say practice at 21 feet, because if you can hit a, your target at 21 feet within the 6-inch you know, pie plate or the circles, the chances are you'll hit just about anything that you're aiming at uh, in a normal encounter. 50 feet, chances are you're really not going to be shooting at somebody 50 feet away. I mean, you're far enough you can run or take cover. But 21 feet, uh, you know, that's within that distance is pretty much, you know, uh, uh, actual common distance for uh, gun encounters. And don't forget, uh, you know, you know, I mean, how many people carried a 380? 
secret agents know, FBI know, police know. And I heard the, it was kind of foolish, it was kind of foolish that somebody said, oh, police can carry bigger calibers because they can carry bigger guns. Uh, guys, there's a lot of really nice uh, ported heavy guns that are small, that are very accurate. You know, there, there's quite a few of them. You can carry basically just about anything that doesn't print. So, uh, you know, they make, uh, look into some of the small 1911s, like the Colt Defenders. Uh, you know, there's a lot of small, you know, paras out, and different things like that, that are pretty heavy stainless steel guns and, uh, and carbon steel frames and stuff that uh, would absorb a lot of shock from a bullet. And compensating always does help. And people say compensating. Well, they say, oh, muzzle flash will blind you. Listen, guys. In a dark room, any muzzle blast is going to blind you and maybe temporarily uh, disorientate you. But you're not going to be thinking of that. You're going to have so many enzymes and adrenaline in your body, you're, you won't even think about it. You probably won't even notice it. You want to be able to hit your target. Uh, you know, I mean, that is the bottom line. You want to hit what you're shooting at. And uh, if you have a compensate gun, at least the first shot or two that you get off, you're going to hit your target. Uh, you know, I took a 1911, my Nighthawk, which is compensated. It's 45 ACP. It's a stainless steel gun. It's small. It's not real big. But I was very accurate at uh, 21 feet with it. I'm sure I'd be accurate to 50 feet out to a very good gun. I got bullseyes at 21 feet. I kept everything, all seven rounds, within a six-inch circle. Uh, great gun. Handled gun. Uh, aimed good. I mean, it was just an awesome gun. And that's not a really big gun, and there's smaller ones than that. You, know, you don't have to go with 45. You can go with 40 Smith and Wesson. You can go with 9 millimeter. You know, uh, but you have to really decide the gun that you're going to pick may defend your life. So you should really pick a gun that is um, effective, that's uh, reliable, and really, if you live in a communist gun state, well, then you can't. You probably got to have to buy. You know buy your gun first but if you live in a uh, gun free state you know a non-communist gun state like Florida or some of the other ones you could just go out to a range any gun range you know and uh, you can rent a gun and shoot it you know you might spend a hundred bucks between two three guns buying them and all the ammunition to shoot but you will get a good feel for what gun that you can handle what gun you like and it's really the best way to do it but thanks a lot for tuning in to my uh, drive-by video, and it's just that uh, I really think 380s suck for carry. Uh, really, I mean, they're only a backup gun. So thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. And we're on US 41 going north. It's about 85 degrees now. Uh, and uh, everybody have a great day.